Are you ready to be in the top 2%? Hey there prompt warriors. Are you ready to up your game and become a top prompter? Because let's be real, AI is not going anywhere and those who master it will have a huge advantage. I'm here to help you get there, even if you're not a tech whiz. This video is your crash course to AI mastery, no matter what chat AI tool you're using. So if you're ready to take your career and prompting to the next level, join me on this journey to the top 2%. This content has been designed to be shared within your business or with your colleagues and your friends. So like, subscribe, share it along, and let's get going. What we're going to be discussing today is prompt engineering for generative AI. And um, we're going to start looking at things like why do I need to learn prompt engineering? And we're going to dig into the what is prompt engineering and some of the common mistakes. We'll then delve into how to do some prompt engineering. I'll give you some strategies um, and ultimately give you some fundamentals that you need to master to get most out of your prompting. And then what we're going to do is looking at some master concepts. These are the things that are going to take you to that next level. And then I'm going to give you some bonus tips and tricks uh, to make you that pro that you want to be. All right, so why prompt engineering? Well, AI is not going to take your job, people, but people who've mastered AI, they just might. And we've already seen a huge uptick in people learning AI and getting ahead in their careers. So why prompt engineering? Well, it's a high demand skill. To effectively communicate with generative AI, you need to be able to operate it. Unlocking AI's full potential is super important. A lot of investment and a lot of energy has gone into getting AI and getting the most out of it is super important. All right, we want to also future-proof your skill sets. Staying ahead of this ever-changing world and this ever-changing technology landscape is absolutely in your best interests. We also want you to be adaptable and also have these transferable skills. So prompt engineering applies across multiple industries and domains and multiple tools that are out there at the moment. All right, this also helps you to shape the future of AI. So you're actively being a participant in where AI is going and your feedback and your use is ultimately going to help um, the, the future technology expand. Mastering prompting is ultimately going to help you use AI tools like a professional. It's also going to allow you to go into the more advanced sections of um, AI, like building AI agents, where we basically take AI tools and start chaining them together to get even more compelling, more fine-grained, and better value out of these AI tools. We also are able, you're also able to create business-ready outputs a lot quicker and a lot smoother, and it's ultimately going to flow with your business style. It's also going to allow you to do faster and more accurate content and as we know, the faster and the more accurate things are, the more efficient you can become and the more productive you can become. All right, it's also going to allow you to have a deeper understanding of your craft, including AI's ability to help with your craft. Your craft just re requires you to have a depth and experience in certain areas and AI is going to help you even uncover even more of that that you're just not able to learn right now. You wouldn't believe me if I told you, but most people are using it wrong. Someone threw away the manual and just said, go for it. I mean, like, where's the manual? How do we do it? Right, that's why we're here. Right, so, so what? Tyron, so what? Well, I'm going to tell you now that your AI tools are like having experts in your employment at a fraction of the cost. And these tools and these experts can help you carry out complex tasks. It can take funky instructions. It can ask clarifying questions. It can create tasks, action plans. It can create amazing opportunities for you and your business. And, and finally, it allows that data-driven decision-making, using large language models, using data, using trained AI, gen AI, ultimately becomes data-driven. So now's the time to harness it. So what is prompt engineering? Well, at its most fundamental, prompt engineering is, allow, is about taking natural language inputs, designing them in such a way that it produces optimal outputs for you. All right, so common mistakes that we find out there, people are using it like a Google search. Or we want more context. We want to allow more clarity in the problem that you're trying to solve. We're also finding that there's not enough explanation on what you wanted to produce and how it should look. And people are providing far too much information sometimes. I've seen prompts that are probably half a novel. Uh, it doesn't need to be that long. So these are the things that we're gonna work through and teach you how to solve. All right, so here's a, um, a common mistake that I see 
very often. Um, and it's a generic example here, but on the right you'll see summarize the meeting notes. Okay, it's a it's a it's a fairly decent prompt. It'll get you the answers, um, but it might not be quite what you're looking for. All right, the prompt in green uh, gives you a little bit more granularity. It asks for a bit more context, and it basically explains to the large language model what you want it to do. All right, so those those are two very stark differences in prompting techniques. So more context and a good structure will massively improve the results. If not, try again. That's the beauty about these uh, large language models and, and chats. You can try and try and try again. And the more you try, the better you'll get at it. All right, so I've put some prompting strategies and some things to remember for you. So every AI tool has its strengths and its weaknesses, right? What I mean by that, ChatGPT, Gemini, Llama, and um, perplexity they all have their strengths and weaknesses they all do different things all very similar but they all have um, their limitations and I think it's really good to have that mindset of experimentation and innovation and exploring go for it you're not going to break anything right the tips and tricks evolve what I'm showing you today is really at the cutting edge and it's going to even get even more refined and better all right these techniques are going to push you right up into the top 2%. I can tell you that um, from working with a number of people in the industry, these are things that a lot of people wish they knew. And the things to remember, follow the prompt engineering guidelines. Yeah, you can be lazy and you can type in your simple prompt, show me the meeting notes, but if you really wanna get the most out of it, do it, do it properly. Remember that you can always prompt the prompt, meaning you can ask the AI to give you a sample of a good prompt. All right, so you can say, hey, can you provide me a prompt for the prompt for the prompt question, right? And it'll get basically give you an example of what to type and how to type it, and it'll give you the best practices. So if you if you ever get stuck, try the prompt. The prompt prompting fundamentals. All right. So optimized prompts almost always have a persona, the goal or the objective that you're trying to reach, a task, the context or the background and some sort of an output format of what you're looking for. So we'll go into a little bit more detail over here. So by persona, what do I mean? A persona is something that you would like the role of the uh, large language model to play. So for example, you wanted to act like a manager, act like a creative director, act like a marketing analyst or a programmer. So give it a persona, give it something that it knows what it needs to respond like. Um, you don't go to a salesman to ask you how to do programming. So you would never ask a salesman for programming advice, all right? So tell it what you want. What's the goal or the objective? This is really important. So what do you want to achieve? What's the problem that you're trying to solve? What is it? Be specific about your objective. So are you trying to be uh, persuasive? Are you trying to get somebody to sign the deal? Are you trying to um, uh, get 100% accuracy in the, co in the code or 100% um, validation on something? So give it a specific objective and it will work with you to do that. All right, so the task, uh, what do you want it to do? So make a list, make a step-by-step -step instruction manual, make a, um, a business blueprint, make a, a business case. So give it a task, give it something that you want it to work with. And um, if you've got a context, so what is the background? So why are you trying to ask it this question? All right, so I want to make a business case for using AI in an enterprise organization. I've got a lot of uh, users that could benefit from us. So there's context there, right? There's investment um, that might be necessary. Um, and if you've already got those examples or any of the information, that is great. Pass it that context so it knows what you work, what it's working with. All right, those are called few shot and zero shot examples. Um, I'll show you a little bit more detail in that in, in the upcoming sections. Right, then the output format. So if you've got an idea of what it must look like, so uh, you know that your business, or you you always like to have a header and a, and a footer and um, a body and sub, sub points, include it. Let, let the LLM know what you're looking for and it'll structure the output in the way that you like. All right, so already pretty cool. All right, so let's go into it. General tips for good prompts. All right, so these are gonna be the generic things. Um, you're probably already abiding by this, but let's just go over it really quickly just for, for clarity and that you can ground it in your, um, your current work. All right, so be clear and concise. Make your prompts easy to understand. Nobody likes a instruction 
um, being given an instruction that's difficult to follow and you don't know what you actually need to do. So be direct with it. Say what you want. Don't, uh, don't beat about the bush, right? All right, so speak, be specific. Ask for the type of response that you want. All right, avoid unclear language. Don't open up to interpretation and vagueness. All right, frame up one thought at a time. So if you're asking your LLM to do something for you, um, think of it as a human being. Don't don't think of it as a, a machine. Think of it as if I had to ask my assistant to do something, I don't give them 75 things to do all at once. I say, oh, cool, these are the top two or three things. How about you go in and do that? Come back to me and we'll review it and then, we'll, and then I'll give you the next sub next set of stuff. All right, so, so think about it in that manner as well. And I think that's a top tip that I, a, a lot of people um, can benefit from. All right, so using grammar and punctuation, I think this is just general good practice. And uh, don't be, again, like I said, don't be afraid to try different things. If the output's not as satisfactory, give it a go again, rephrase it, choose a different style, choose a different output, choose a different context, um, and you'll eventually get what you're looking for. All right. Uh, a main thing over here is do not re repeat instructions multiple times. So don't say, um, give me uh, the costing and then give me the costing and then give me the costing and give me the cost. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get confused and it's probably going to give you um, um, responses that aren't going to be in line with what you're looking for. Now we're getting to the level up stuff. These are the concepts that are going to take you from amateur to an absolute freaking pro. All right. So. What we've got over here is some concepts that I want you to want you to keep in the back of your mind, in your mind. So get a pen and a paper and start writing these things down. I'm going to go into a bit more detail in this and I will show you exactly what I mean. Uh, but few shot and zero shot. We've got prompt separators. Um, we've got things called the chain of thought. We've got prompt chaining. Tree of thought. Retrieval augmented generation and directional stimulus prompting. Right, so what we're gonna do is go through each of those in a little bit more detail and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I've used Gemini as my um, larger language model of choice. I, I just prefer it. I enjoy the Google environment, but doesn't mean that this isn't gonna work for any other environment. So a zero shot and has and a, and a few shots. So just real quick is zero shot has got no context. All right, so here's an example that I'm gonna use be using um, through all of these scenarios over here, just so you can see and get a better flavor of where uh, these things ultimately land. All right, so the question that I'm asking is write an email to my boss saying I want to use AI. All right, so it's gonna produce something pretty high level. It's gonna be quite verbose. It's gonna give a huge amount of information. It's probably not relevant, All right? So adding more context to it, right? So on the right hand side over here, I modified the prompt to say, write an email to my boss saying I want to use AI. And I've given a context, my work is my workload is increased, I've got lots of repetitive activities. And then I'm giving it a bit more information about my boss, my boss likes it brief and to the point, and compelling, and he always wants to understand simple costs and benefits, right? So if it's not making money, saving money, you're getting more efficient, what are you coming to me for it? So here's the answer. All right, so that's a zero shot and a few shot. Master that. If you understand that, you're going to get some really, really compelling outputs. All right, prompt separators. So this is a concept where you use delimiters. So not unlike uh, using bold or using uh, bullet points within your um, uh, emphasis for somebody to, to follow certain instructions, you basically say to the large language model, in between these two instruction blocks, I want you to do certain activities. So here's an example. All right, so writing the same email to the boss, but now you can pass it very specific instructions. All right, these are basically delimiters and um, distinctions that it's going to pass to the language model and it's going to look to emphasize those. It's going to go and look for more accurate information. That's just the way it's been programmed. So if you use these, it's going to be more accurate. All right, and then you close it off with your instructions. So you don't have to use it in exactly HTML markup, but use it in, these, um, in this way to try and get more um, out of your um, responses. So as you can see, we're working out better ways and different ways to get more efficient outputs. Um, the really cool thing is if you put for citing uh, citations and sources, it'll actually start getting you the sources where it actually found the information from. So again, really, really powerful application of this. A lot of the time people don't know where the information came from. Use these prompt separators to your advantage. Chain of thought. 
chain of thought goes beyond just providing an answer okay so what it basically means is it's going to tell you how it got to the answer it's not just going to say here's the answer it's going to give you a bit more of a breakdown and give you some reasonable explanation of why and what is happening All right so if you don't have chain of thought in your prompt standard prompt is going to be what is the capital of france it's going to give you the correct answer it's going to be paris yeah absolutely 100 percent. if you're looking just for that perfect but here's the example of what a chain of thought will actually do so think about it if you would do research papers or scientific things or um, your bosses ask you how did you derive that decision um, you can basically ask your llm to give you a thought of process at arriving the answer so it's actually going to use chain of thought by the prompt that you've typed in so talk me through your thought process of arriving at the answer so it's got to the answer paris but it basically shows you how it worked it out. It knows that France is a country in Europe, then looked up what the government um, is. And most of the capital cities have um, seats of government. So again, it's basically figured it out um, and it's and it showed, showed you how it came up with that answer. All right, so really powerful stuff and you can see a huge amount of application here. All right, prompt chaining. Um, I wanted to share prompt chaining with you. So a lot of the time people write a single prompt and they uh, think that that the output is all that's going to be there and they take it copy it and then off they go um, so what we can do is start looking at the chain prompting technique so write your similar email write your similar prompt okay so your base prompt about the email to your boss about using ai um, it shoots out the output let's add the next part of the um, chat so we can say add in responsible ai with the technology um, that will need to be confirmed all right and then you can also wait for that response to come back and then you can add the next part to it so there's further conversations on procurement so as you thinking you can start chaining up your prompts so you don't have to include all of this in one prompt you can start basically breaking it down step by step all right and then as you can see over here it's now basically worked out a uh, final output that you can send through to your boss Right, so really, really important technique to use, prompt chaining, um, all of the stuff is in memory, it allows you to sort of chat with the previous example and chat with uh, the context, so use it to your advantage, there's a reason it's called chat GPT, um, and it's a reason it's called chat um, um, windows and tokens that can be passed into memory, so, so use it to your advantage. All right, so tree of thought, um, a very similar technique to the chain of thought, um, but it basically builds on that and it allows you to do some um, if this, then that type of scenarios. And it's really, really powerful stuff. So it's not just limiting itself to one answer. It's basically giving you options and multiple paths that you can go down. So, right, so the example is going to be, should we take an umbrella today? Use the tree of thought. And what it's going to do is it's ultimately going to take it and break down what the um, information it has on hand. So it's basically going to say, all right, cool, it's, today is April. It knows where we are and it's going to stop making a decision. And it's ultimately going to guide you down a path. So it's not just going to say, yes, take an umbrella or no, take, don't take an umbrella. It's going to basically provide some reasoning and some uncertainties for you to consider and ultimately making a final call. So this is the real power of the tree of thought. So it's giving you multiple avenues to explore and ultimately it's up to you to make the um, most accurate one that resonates with you uh, so again really really powerful stuff for the tree of thought so give it a go and um, if you want to expand it even further you can add things like uh, link it up to de bono's six hat thinking and um, you can get even more compelling output so give it a try this is one of my favorite ones so retrieval augmented generation or rag is just a really fancy word for the prompt looking at your data or looking at external data to basically provide an output right so don't get uh, too hung up on the acronym or too hung up on the technicalities behind it this is really simple as take some information pass it in pass it in make sense of it and then shoot out an output right uh, so for this example over here is um i said write an email to my, to my boss and i've linked up to a youtube video uh, the youtube video is one of my videos about building a retrieval augmented generation ai app um, and basically um it's now gone and looked at that youtube video 
deciphered what it's about, tells you how long it is, and ultimately shoots out a response. So really, really powerful, really compelling kind of stuff, isn't it? All right, so directional stimulus prompting. All right, so this is really where you give a stimulus towards a specific output or tool, or nudging it in a direction that you want it to go, right? So the, the, an easy example of this would be, imagine a person is using an umbrella on a sunny day. So that's the directional stimulus, all right? So people don't use an umbrella on a sunny day, but you want to try and get it to point in a direction of why people would use an umbrella on a sunny day. Directional stimulus is an advanced prompting technique. It basically allows you to prompt and push things in a different way. I've seen some fantastic things around like direction stimulus prompting, which created characters along the way as it was talking to the large language model. So as a character met a person with a power, it absorbed the power. It met the next person and it absorbed that person's power, but threw away the other power and only kept the good powers. So again, directional stimulus can be very, very powerful when looking at um, creating stories or creating um, outputs that are at that more advanced level. All right, so hopefully those master concepts have now taken you from mediocre to, oh my goodness, I didn't know it could do that. Um, um, all right, so I've got some more pro tips for you over here. So you've obviously learned some new master concepts. You've got some good foundations. And these are things that are going to help you round out your experience and your ability a lot more. So prime the LLM to respond in a certain way. Give it what you want. All right, you can also ask yourself in this response that you've received, do you want it to be this long? Is the, is the type of content correct? Is the tone correct? Prompt it, tune it, and, and tweak it to where you like it. All right, if you're doing creating marketing content or you're creating content for a certain person or an audience or a place, pop that in saying who you're presenting this to. It'll understand then how it should tailor the content. All right, what is the problem that you want to solve? The LLM loves to know what problems you want to solve. So everything written out there um, is mostly around problems, right? People come to the internet or come to a search thing to try and solve a, a specific problem. So give it the problem you want to solve. Right, limit negative examples. What do I mean that by that is like a lot of people say, I do not want to see uh, this output, or I do not want to see repetition, or I do not want to do that. Rather, provide it positive um, prompts rather than negative prompts. So rather, say, I want to see outputs that have uh, well structured uh, business case headings as per PM Bok, for example. Uh, so, so use it, use it like that. Rather, say, do not, don't say, I don't want to see. All right, last, uh, the last couple of things over here, structure the prompt. So I've already given you some really good structured prompt uh, techniques and then ultimately look at following up prompts to add more detail. So use your prompt chaining, most helpful and most beneficial to get working programs, working code and working documentation and outputs that, re that really actually work for you. All right, so that's all I've got for you today. Um, I've got a couple of ideas that you can start playing around with. If you'd like a copy of this content and a, a copy of the slide pack, reach out to me, um, follow my blog and follow my webpage and you'll be able to download this information. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy this video, like it, subscribe to it, share it amongst your peers, your colleagues, your workmates. Happy prompting.